So here we are, lying away, two in the morning, staring at the ceiling, worrying about the stupid thing I said yesterday, or the scary thing I have to do tomorrow, or that the rent is due, you have a toothache, the funny noise your car keeps making. You are desperate to fall asleep. You know, a couple hours, you have to get up and face the day again. But the harder you try to fall asleep, the awaker you get. Excuse me, the waker we get. I know, been there. I always say those of us who have insomnia should be brilliant at math. You know, if you're awake at two and you have to get up at seven, okay. If I go to sleep right now, that'll give me five hours of sleep and maybe that'll be enough. But then you look at the clock a little later and it's 2.47. Okay, 13 minutes until three. Okay, three to seven gives me four hours and 13 minutes of sleep. And so I've got to go to sleep right now. Maybe this sounds familiar to you. If you have insomnia, if you struggle with sleep, you have come to the right place. Because in this episode, I'm going to share four really simple things that help me fall asleep. And I bet they're going to work for you too. I've had insomnia for as long as I can remember. And over the years, I found some things that really helped me and some of the people around me to fall asleep more effectively and to stay asleep. And today I'm going to share my four top techniques for getting to sleep and staying asleep. Number one, before you get into bed, take some steps to make sure your feet are going to be warm throughout the night. I know, I know that sounds way too simple, but it's made a huge difference for me. I believe absolutely warm feet equal good sleep. <laughs> Another math equation, put on a pair of socks, put on a pair of knitted slippers, something comfy before you go to bed. Or if you're like me, I don't like wearing socks. What you can do is, what I do is just lay a bathrobe over my feet at night. But no matter how you keep your feet warm throughout the night, research shows that warm feet can actually help you fall asleep and stay asleep. So get some socks, get a bathrobe, warm feet. Second tip is to focus on your breathing. And I'm talking about deep breathing, belly breathing, really simple, climb into bed and get comfortable. I think very often you jump into bed and you're just not, just allow yourself a few minutes to just let your body relax into the warmth and the comfort of that bed. Just let go. Now, put your hand on your belly and as you breathe in, let your belly expand with your breath as if you were blowing up a balloon. And as your belly rises, feel your hand lift. Now, as you breathe out, allow your belly to fall and notice that your hand falls with it. Breathing in as your belly rises and out as your belly falls. And as you continue to breathe deeply, Notice the sense of relaxation that spreads throughout your body. As you continue to breathe, I want you to know that there are a lot of different kinds of breaths you can do that people swear by that help them go to sleep. There are counting breaths. You count your inhalation, inhalations and exhalations. And I urge you to try them. See if they work for you. They don't work for me, to be honest. I get confused with all the counting and I always end up out of breath trying to, to match my breathing to the numbers. The numbers don't work for me. For me, it's easier and more relaxing to simply to say to myself, I am as I breathe in at peace as I breathe out. For me, the phrase I am at peace 
really does bring peace to my body and my mind. But you may have another phrase that works really well for you. This is about finding the things, the tools that work best for you and putting them into place so sleep becomes something that is a a wonderful part of your life, not, as I know, something you worry about. The third tip is to massage the acupressure points called spirit gate. And this is an aside. If you're dismissing acupressure as some airy fairy nonsense, as I once did, I just want you to know that there have been some studies, a number of studies that actually prove, we have research that proves acupressure can be a really effective tool in helping us fall asleep. So spirit gate. Spirit gate is actually a pair of powerful points that are located on your wrists. And if you want to, let's let's just find one of the spirit gates together. So pick a hand, either hand, turn that hand, palm up. Now, you're going to, the spirit gate is located at the crease in your wrist, and it's just below your pinky. So if you look at your hand, and slide slide your other hand down under, right below your pinky there and feel around. There's a small hollow space there. Got it? Okay, good. Now, massage it gently. I use a circular motion, but however you want to massage it or just press lightly. Do what works for you. And as you massage, allow yourself to feel the relaxation spreading through your body. Maybe take a deep breath or maybe continue to do your belly breathing and let yourself sink a little more deeply into the warmth and comfort of your bed. Just let go of the cares of your day. And you can do this for as long as it feels good to you. No right, no wrong here. Just what makes you feel comfortable. And if you're still awake, go ahead and repeat on the other side. Number four is the bear hug. And I I love this one. I use it almost every night. I know it's helped me fall asleep and I know it's worked for other people too. But I have to share, I found this completely by accident. I originally created the bear hug as a part of the bear technique, which I created to help people deal with panic attacks. But to my utter surprise and to the surprise of my clients and people I recommended it to, we found that just using the bear hug just on its own worked really well to calm the body and mind, especially in the middle of the night. For me, whenever I use the bear hug night, day, I find it creates a sense of relaxation. It gives me a sense of warmth and of safety. It makes me feel safe. The thing about it that I love is it's so simple and so easy to do. All right, so let's do it together. Now, the bear hug is, (laughs) surprise, surprise, the bear hug is a hug. It's a self hug. And begin by crossing your wrists, then resting those wrists against your chest with your fingers extended. So your hands are crossed over your chest. Now, chances are your fingertips have landed near or on this V-shaped spot that they're located sort of on the outer edge of your chest, about three fingers width below your collarbone. And if your hands are crossed, your fingers are probably pretty close to these two indentations, one on either side. So feel around until you find them all. Got them? All right. Just massage those points and let relaxation and a sense of ease flow through your body. Now, these points are also acupressure points, and they're called the letting go points. And they work exactly to do that. They help you let go of stress and anxiety. And you can use them throughout the day, but I find them really effective in helping me and help you fall asleep. Now, as you continue to massage, what I do is I pull my arms closer to my body in a a really comforting self-hug. And that helps reduce my stress. I think there's something about the warmth that also helps me fall asleep. 
You can also, you know, focus on the deep breathing or repeat to yourself a really comforting phrase like, all is well. I am safe in this moment. I let go of my day. I welcome a good night's sleep. I would love for you to play with this. See what phrase works with you, what breath works for you. But please give them a try. There's there's nothing more difficult than lying awake at night. And I love the idea that there are tools that we can use to help us feel better. Now, I have a favor to ask. I'm hoping that you're going to try this bear hug. And I would love to know how it works for you. Is it useful? Would you recommend it to someone else? Did you find a way to work with it that's even better? I would love some input from you. So thanks in advance. And if you'd like to see a demonstration of the bear technique, which includes the bear hug, I have a video on my website at Wendy Leeds dot com slash videos. And if you're dealing with panic and look, you and I both know panic can happen at any moment and that can be stressful in and of itself. So it's really important that you keep that bear technique close at hand so you know that it's there and know that you can use it anytime you need it. And to make that easy for you, I created a download just for you. Get it for free at wendyleads.com slash techniques. And I've left a, a link in the show notes. So it's easy for you to just print it out, put it on the fridge or take it with you. Keep it where it will be there for you to help you the next time panic strikes. The other option is to sign up for my mini course at wendyleads.com slash course. And uh, while this mini course is not free, you can use the coupon code subscriber to get 40% off. That makes the entire cost of the course $5. And look, If $5 is a burden to you in any way, just ask me. I would absolutely give you lifetime access to this course for free. I do that for anyone who asks. So see the show notes for links to the course, the bear video, the downloads, an anxiety quiz, and my book, Common Sense, which is a book on anxiety for everyone. All these resources are to help us, you and I, deal with our anxiety in a more practical, loving way. No more suffering. There are ways you and I can work together to feel better. I wish you all the best. Know that I understand your struggle because it's my struggle too. And I am rooting for both of us. Until we're together again, I wish you peace joy, and love. See you in the next episode.